Hi, I'm Mark McLitch, Technical Product Manager for Small Character Technologies here at Squid Inc. In today's video, we're going to discuss calibrating our modulation setting in our Jetstream CIJ printer. Alright, some of you might be wondering first, uh, what are we doing when we're adjusting or calibrating our modulation value? Uh, in a very basic sense, what we're doing is we're adjusting the break point of our inkjet in the printhead from a solid stream to droplets and where those droplets separate from the inkjet. Ultimately, why we have control over this, why we can adjust the modulation, is we need to have that separation or that break point inside the charge tunnel in our printhead. Ultimately, what that does is guarantee or uh, help us achieve good quality print by getting a quality charge or the correct charge on our droplets that we're using for printing. Before we adjust our modulation setting, we'll look at where that is in the programming here in a little bit. There are a few precondition variables that we have to verify first and make sure they're stable before we make an adjustment like this, an adjustment to the modulation, okay? So the first thing we need to look at is viscosity. We have to have stable viscosity before we adjust our modulation. If your viscosity is out of spec or out of range, make sure you watch our troubleshooting the viscosity circuit or viscometer video. The other precondition variable that we need to verify is pressure. Our internal pressure needs to be stable. If it's not, if we're seeing significant fluctuations in pressure, make sure you watch our video on troubleshooting the pressure pump and pressure transducer. Uh, a couple other items we need to verify. One is the printhead clean. Are all of our critical printhead components clean? If they're not, make sure you watch our video on proper cleaning of the printhead. Another variable we need to verify is whether or not the ink stream is aligned properly. If it's not, you're gonna to wanna to watch our video on back flushing the nozzle, and also possibly our video on manually realigning the jet. Okay, if all of those precondition variables are verified as being correct or stable, what we can then do is calibrate our modulation value. Okay, if we're calibrating our modulation value, typically the scenario or the symptom uh, that is causing us to do this is poor print quality, okay? Um, we're gonna pop in some photos of uh, different scenarios in which we have poor print uh, relative to incorrect modulation. Now, you might be wondering, why would my modulation need to be changed uh, if it came from the factory uh, calibrate a specific way? Uh, in this scenario, uh, sometimes the printer might be a few years old. It might take a little bit more to drive our gun body to break our inkjet up into, into droplets where we need it to. A little bit more voltage, basically, is what we're going for. So um, as the system ages, as the gun body ages, we just might need to recalibrate this slightly. It's not common, but again, this is just a video to explain and show you how to do that. Okay, when we're adjusting or calibrating our modulation, the first thing we want to do is load up our Jetstream test message that comes pre-programmed in every single printer. The reason we do this is that test message is a full 32 dot raster and it has a 32 dot font inside of it. So what we can see is every single possible charge position or droplet position in a print. Um, so if there are any issues with modulation that are impacting print quality, we will see it with this print, okay? So once we've got that message loaded up, we'll then go into actually making adjustments to our modulation. Uh, if you're not sure how to load up the test message, all you need to do is go to your file folder icon on the home page. Look for Jetstream test message. Again, this is pre-programmed in every single printer. So we need to load that up just by clicking print. All right, once we've loaded up our Jetstream test message, one thing to be mindful of, if you're in the field and you're doing this, is this message, basically the easiest way to use it is to have it set to auto print. Now, normally from the factory, that's how it's gonna be set anyway. Um, so what we're gonna do is basically just continuously print with this message while we're testing the print quality and adjusting our modulation. So uh, you're gonna want a little waste collector or something to put under the print head so we can just continuously print. You're gonna want some test paper, cardboard, whatever you have available to you. 
And lastly, what you may need to do, depending on your application, is uh, if an encoder is involved, we would just unplug the encoder from the printer. That way we're not looking for any signal coming off the encoder, any pulses coming off of it, so we can just continuously auto print without that being there. So with our system, we're unplugging the encoder. This message is set to auto print, so I'll just give you a quick example of a print test. When we hit print, it's just gonna continuously print, and we'll run a sheet of paper under the head. Now, we're doing this by hand. Distance isn't gonna stay perfect, that's okay. Uh, general rule of thumb, if we're about three quarters of an inch away from the print head, we're gonna be able to see what we need to see as far as print quality is concerned. So if I hit print, so now the system is just continuously printing. And if we pass our sheet of paper under the print head, we can see what it's doing. Okay, so a little bit earlier in the video, we discussed uh, some improper prints, what they might look like. Uh, so at this point, if we're testing the print, we'll have a good idea of whether or not our modulation is actually calibrated correctly. So uh, we'll cut to a couple images here, or a few images here, uh, one being what the print should look like, what this message should look like if it's printing correctly. We've also got an example of if the modulation is too low, what the print would look like. We also have an example of if the modulation is too high, what that would look like. All right, so we're to the point where we're actually going to go through and test our modulation range and get it calibrated. So what we're gonna do during this process is one, we're gonna keep our test message loaded and printing so we'll be able to take test prints each time we make changes to our modulation. Now what we're gonna do, again, once we verify this message is loaded, we're gonna go into our settings page. We're gonna go to system setting. We're gonna go to modulation. What we're gonna do is start with a low value so we've got a current modulation of 10. That's where I recommend starting. What we'll do is take a test print of the modulation set to 10, and then we'll increase the value by five points and take another test print, and we'll continue from there. So we'll make five point increments, and we're gonna take a test print after each one. What we're also gonna do is take a note next to each test print what value that print was at. And ultimately what we're looking for is we're gonna find our first good print. So let's say when we set our modulation value to 20, we get a good print. Let's say we set it to 25, we, get a, we still get a good print. We set it to 30, that's still a good print. Let's say we get all the way up to 40 and it prints well. So we've just found that from 20 to 40, the system will print perfectly. So what we've just done is found the entrance and the exit of the charge tunnel with our breakpoint. Now all we need to do is set it in the middle of those values. So our range is 20 to 40. We're gonna set our modulation to 30. That means we're right in the middle. So we'll actually physically do this. We'll take some test prints and show you how it works, but that's all we're doing is we're testing out this range and finding the midpoint. Okay, so again, we're starting at a modulation value of 10. So we're actually gonna physically take a print test now and see what we come up with. Um, we are using a slide table just to get a consistent print for the video. Again, you can do this in auto print mode, just passing the sheet of paper under the print head by hand. Uh, you're gonna get similar results, okay. All right, so we're gonna take our first test print. Again, this is modulation value of 10. And you'll see that that is too low so we do have a big line through our text. So we're just gonna take a note of that. That was modulation of 10. And again, we'll just keep track after each change so we know what the range is. So now we're gonna go up to 15. So we're just gonna increase our modulation value by five, take another test print, and we're just gonna keep going from there. Okay, so we've gone from 10 to 15. We're just gonna take another test print. Okay, so here's 15, and good news is we've got a really good quality print. There's no lines or anything being cut off, anything like that. So we're gonna keep track of this. So 15 is our first good print. 
We're just going to keep going from there. Now what we're really looking for, uh, hopefully we have several values that are good quality prints in a row. That'll be our range. So let's say 15, 20, 25, etc. are all good prints. What we're looking for now is the first bad print and that will tell us we've reached the other side of the charge tunnel. So we're just going to keep going in five point increments until we find that threshold. Okay, you'll see when we hit 40, we've got a really poor quality print here. So some of our text is getting cut off and it's very compressed. So ultimately, what we've found is from 15 to 35, we've got perfect quality prints. So that's our modulation range. So now all we need to do for our set point or our setting in the system is go right in between these two values. So 25, is dead center, that's going to be our modulation set point. And again, ultimately what we've done or what we're doing when we set this in the system is we've got that break point of our inkjet centered in the charge tunnel. Okay, so we were able to stop at 40. That was our first bad print. So again, our range was actually 15 to 35. So all we need to do is set our modulation value to 25, right in the middle of that range. Okay, so we've got our modulation set to 25. Now it's always a good idea once you've got it set, just take a few test prints, make sure everything's stable as it should be, and from there we're good to go. Okay, so this is again at 25. We're just gonna take a few test prints and we would expect this to be absolutely perfect. And again, some of you out in the field, you might just be doing this in auto print mode. So you might just be passing a sheet of paper under the head while it's continuously printing and that's perfectly fine. Again, you're going to see the same thing. Okay, so we've got our modulation calibrated or set to where we need it. Um, again, as a very general just overview of what we've done, um, all we found was the breakpoint of our inkjet entering and exiting the charge tunnel. Okay, so now we've got it centered in the middle, right? So entering and exiting are kind of our, our good uh, print quality thresholds. We've centered it based off that in the charge tunnel. So now, you know, earlier we discussed some of the precondition variables that need to be stable for this to all work. Um, so let's say maybe pressure changes a little bit, maybe for some reason our viscosity changes a little bit. That can have an impact on the break point of our jet. But since we've got it centered in the charge tunnel, we've got some flexibility uh, for it to move. As long as it's in the charge tunnel, we're going to print okay. So again, if some of those precondition variables change a little bit, we're still going to be perfectly fine. So that's why we do this. That's why we want to make sure we find the set point right in the middle of that range uh, to give us that flexibility. All right, one question some of you might have, uh, those of you who are a little bit more experienced with CIJ printers, you might be wondering, is there an LED or green, uh, LED in the print head that will let me view the break point of my inkjet in the charge tunnel? The answer to that question is yes, we do have that. I'll show you where it's located. Um, you would need an inspection loop to view that. Again, it's gonna be very small. We need to magnify that jet so we can see what's going on. Um, one thing I'll point out right away is you'll notice we didn't focus on that for this video. Reason being is calibrating the modulation the way we did by running test prints and really dialing it in is a much more accurate way to do this than looking just physically looking at the break point of your inkjet, okay? That'll get you in the ballpark, roughly, but it's not perfect. So I will show you where the LED is, how you can look at it, but again, the more thorough way to do this is calibrate your modulation based off actual uh, test printing. Okay, so we've turned printing off. All we're gonna do is slide the print head out of the sleeve. We are still jetting naturally. We have to be doing that to actually see our jet 
and the break point of the jet and our droplets. So we're gonna slide the print head out of the sleeve. And if we look at our charge tunnel, our charge electrode, which is right here, you'll see there is a green LED. And if you were to take an inspection loop or magnifier, you could actually look in there and see the, the inkjet you know, separating into droplets. Okay, so for those of you, again, who are more familiar with CIJ and are wondering if you can do this, yes, you can. If we were to make modulation adjustments while looking at this, you'd actually be able to see the break point of the inkjet changing. Again, this isn't a, the perfect way to do it. It'll get you in the ballpark. So we're just showing you this briefly for those of you who are familiar with that method. Um, but again, even if you do this, I would still recommend going through, taking test prints and making sure it's styled in properly. All right, so here's kind of a close up uh, on our charge tunnel. So you can see that green LED and you can see our ink stream or ink jet above that green LED. And you can actually see you know, our connected stream of droplets coming in from the gun body nozzle or gun body. And then you can actually see that stream separate into individual droplets. And that is actually you know, fairly well centered. Um, so now what I'll actually do is I'll, I'm gonna decrease our modulation just as an example and what we should see is that stream basically connect all the way through. Um, again, this is just for reference, for visual reference. Okay, so as I've decreased modulation, you'll see that now we basically have a solid stream of ink. So again, when we were calibrating our modulation value, all we were doing was finding where the breakpoint enters the charge tunnel. And as we increase it, you'll see that breakpoint moves through the charge tunnel and gets closer to the nozzle. All right, one last point to make uh, regarding adjusting or calibrating the modulation is if you're not seeing any response from the gum body, if you've worked through the entire modulation range and there's really no change um, and print quality is just always poor, and assuming, again, we verified all those preconditioned variables um, prior to making the modulation adjustments, if everything else checks out and you're just not having any results, uh, it would likely then be time to troubleshoot the gum body itself. So at that point, you'd wanna watch our video on troubleshooting the gun body and make sure that it's actually functioning properly. All right, so that wraps up our video on calibrating the modulation value for your Jetstream CIJ printer. Uh, if you wanna see more videos on the Jetstream or any of our other products, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't hesitate to head over to squidink.com for even more information on our entire product line. Thanks again.